Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today's video is another starting brandy video and I'm so excited to be finally uploading. If this is the first video you're watching, uh, starting brandy is like a little series I'm doing where I bring you guys along on how I train my little Philly brandy. Disclaimer, I do not consider myself a horse trainer. These videos are just me showing you what I'm doing personally with my horse. It's not meant to, it's not really a training video. I'm not telling you guys how to do things. I'm just bringing you guys along while I do things with Brandy. <laughs> while I train Brandy. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give that little disclaimer. I still have a lot to learn. There's so many things I still need to correct that I do. So yeah, just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> but this video was a little crazy in the filming process. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw my Instagram story. Basically, I thought I was filming when I really wasn't. Well, I was filming. I clicked record and then I look over at the camera and it was off. So it only recorded like, I don't know, 10 minutes out of 30 minutes. I'm so sorry if this video is like very choppy. I had to mix in shots and stuff and it was a mission. <laughs> I'm filming. It's just for the video. I never yeah, make the bed. <laughs> All right guys, so um, I also filmed the video in the middle of the day, which I never really do. Well, I never really work the horses in the middle of the day. I usually wait till the afternoon, but it's been raining every single afternoon. So I had to take advantage and film while the sun was out. My round pen is shaded, so the sun kind of goes in and out in between the trees and then the clouds are rolling in and basically I hope you don't have a hard time seeing what was going on in the round pen but <laughs> yeah please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't already and let's get on into the video all right guys so round penning is one of the most useful exercises when starting a horse it's where you can create a connection and start establishing communication. If I had to choose between an arena or a round pen, I think I would definitely choose the round pen. I, I love working the horses in there. So I always start our round penning sessions by desensitizing the horses to the lunge whip, just to remind them that it's not there to hurt them. After that, I usually just turn her out for a little bit and let her chill out, explore the round pen, do her own thing for a while. And I like to take advantage of this time to just walk around the round pen, pick up any branches that might be in her way or any garbage or anything that might just get in her way when we start actually round penning. Hey guys, so I'm trying something a little bit different. Hopefully it works. I'm actually recording a voice memo that I'm gonna overlap onto the video when I start editing um, because if I just do a voiceover, you won't really hear exactly how I communicate with her. So I decided to do this. I have my little earphones on, so hopefully they work. And I'm gonna get started. All right, so when I first started working Brandy in the round pen, I kind of would bring her in and let her chill for a little bit get used to the round pen the surrounding areas what it's like because I did a lot of groundwork in the round pen she was always really used to it as you can see <laughs> she's over there munching and I desensitized her to the lunge line the lunge whip just to remind her again that it's not here to hurt her she hasn't been worked in a really long time it's been two months none of the horses really have been work have been worked that much as you can tell the round pens like completely overgrown so I apologize <laughs> this is where I'm gonna start actually round penning her and giving her cues teaching her what each cue means I'm gonna talk as if this is her first time but it's not I did all this when she was like two and a half now she's a three-year-old she knows all the cues she knows everything but for the sake of this video and for the sake of the series I'm gonna pretend it's her first time so I'm gonna explain okay so I'm gonna get started Rob and I have different cues it's just your preference whatever you want to teach your horses like for example my cues to walk off is one click like like that once she's walking I click again and that's her cue to trot and then if I kiss that's her cue to lope. Cluck to walk, cluck again to trot, and kiss to lope. And then to increase her lope speed, I kiss again while she's loping. So I kiss again and she's supposed to increase her speed. We're still working on that. <laughs> her slow down cue is easy. She'll be trotting and if I want her to come back down to a walk, I'll say easy. And then to stop, it's whoa. So yeah, those are the cues I taught Brandy, but I mean, you can have any cue, literally. I think Rob's are like, his slow down cue is actually pretty cool. I say easy and he goes, Hmm. He hums really deep in his voice and he was telling me the reason why he taught it that way is so when they're riding or in raining competitions in the pictures you won't see that he's talking. So that's actually pretty cool too if you do like um, any discipline you do that you might take pictures and you don't want to like have a face of you saying easy. You can teach it that way so that you don't have any facial expressions and your pictures come out cool but I don't really mind I rather say easy just because I feel like I don't have a deep enough voice and I feel like hmm I'm afraid they won't hear that but but yeah okay I've been like talking forever so I'm gonna go ahead and get started so the first step when I started teaching Brandy this was I would ask her first with the cue vocally I would say I would cluck and then 
I would put pressure with my body. And then the third step was to smack the floor with the whip. Once she started going, I wouldn't click anymore. I would release all the pressure, showing her, okay, what she did is what I wanted. So it's a good job. So that's how I taught it. For example, to start off, I'm gonna go. Now I'm gonna keep walking, smack. And once she starts walking, I'm gonna back off. But of course, we haven't done this in two months. There's grass in the round pen. So I'm still applying pressure because she stopped a while back. So I don't wanna back off and then have her stop again, but I'm applying a little bit of pressure and she's still walking. So that's good. There, I backed off a little bit. So then I clicked again and she goes for her trot. So if she's already trotting and doing what I asked, which she is, like the cluck means trot, I let go of all pressure and I stop clucking. One of the things I see a lot of people do is they'll continue to cluck when the horse is already doing what they asked. So if they ask them for a trot, I'm not gonna actually cluck because I don't wanna confuse her, but what I usually see is this. I'm gonna say the word cluck instead of actually clucking. They'll cluck, the horse starts to trot, and they'll go cluck, 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 cluck they never stop clucking so the horse gets desensitized to the cue so that's one of the things I really focused on with Brandy was making sure that I stopped my vocal cue so she knows that she's doing what I asked now with her one of the mistakes I do tend to do a lot is I don't tend to release enough pressure because I'm so used to her always stopping she's kind of the opposite of crystal crystal needs like all pressure removed she's full speed all the time I struggle to slow her down and with Brandy it's like the opposite with Brandy I literally have to always like keep the pressure which is not good because then I'm not giving her that release and making her realize that she did what I wanted because I'm so used to her always stopping when I release too much so with her I have to constantly be aware of that and make sure that I give her that release but without letting her slow down too much I was taught and I learned to if they're doing what you ask you back off and that's everything your body your commands your voice so they know that what that they're doing it correctly like my round pen sessions are usually pretty quiet it's usually like this like just quiet unless she needs the reinforcement of like the clicking but if they're doing a good job then there's no sound no pressure I feel like the thing that's helped the most is to stop clucking kissing talking when she does it because if I continue to cluck and kiss and do all that stuff even after she's already doing the gates that I'm asking for then you start to desensitize them to the cue. So if I were to keep on clucking right now, even though she's already giving me what I asked, she's already trotting, because I clucked earlier, right? So she's already trotting, so I stopped clucking. But if I were to keep going, then I would start to desensitize her to that cue. Then it would take a lot more effort for me to get her to start trotting. Because ideally, I would like to just cluck once and have her start her gait. So yeah, so right now she's trotting, she's doing good. When I first started her, I didn't focus too much on her cutting off the round pen because I was focused more on getting her to understand the cues. I I wanted to focus on one thing at a time and when I first started it was teaching her the cues but now that she's older I do want her to trot along the round pen as you can see she starts to cut the round pen in half so I start facing my belly button towards her shoulder and pushing her off until she reaches the fence and then I back off as like good job that's what I wanted you to do again pushing your shoulder now I back off because she went to the fence so now I'm gonna go ahead and slow her down. I've honestly struggled a lot to get the slow down. Ideally, I'm facing her hip bone right now. My belly button is facing her hip bone. And then when I want her to slow down, I would turn and face her shoulder. So my slow down cue is easy. I kind of walk with her like that. So my slow down cue is slow down, not stop. So again, I click to get her walking. So now I'm gonna go ahead and ask her to change directions. Now at first, she has this pretty good. But at first, it was challenging to get her to turn around. I really wanted them to turn in towards me. A lot of people say that that it's a sign of respect. Um, I rather have her turn around, giving me two eyes than giving me two hind ends. I mean, two hind ends, <laughs> two legs or her hind quarters. Some people like when they turn towards the outside, but I, I prefer having two eyes. So when I started teaching her how to do that, I focused a lot on the join up method. If you guys watch Heartland, I love Heartland. Typically, once you round pin a horse for a little while, if you turn your shoulder, ideally what you want to happen is for them to stop and face you. And usually they'll walk all the way up to you. So I use that to my advantage to teach her how to turn around. So as soon as she faces me, I'll put pressure on her outside shoulder to get her to turn in words let me get a good spot where there's no grass missy so I'll catch her eye bring her shoulder in and push 
And now that she's older, I'm working on her keeping her gait throughout the turn. Instead of her stopping or coming down to a walk to turn and then she walks off and then she starts to trot again, I want to try and keep her gait throughout the whole turn. If she's trotting, I want her to turn and continue to trot right away. So that's what we're focused on now. But when I first started teaching her this, I just wanted her to turn towards me. So that's what I do. I, I catch her eye, turn my shoulder in, look at her outside shoulder, point in the direction I want her to go and put pressure on that outside shoulder. That was good. When I was working on the turnaround, I wanted to make sure that she was turning around with respect. So I would wait for that sign of respect, which was giving me two eyes, but nice, smooth turnaround. No head swishing, head throwing, tail throwing, tail swishing, kicking out, none of that. If we were working on that one day and she gave me a good, nice, smooth turnaround, then we were done for the day. That was ending on a good note. So that's kind of how I taught her to turn. A lot of people do it differently. I think I taught it wrong, but it's what works for me and the way I like to do it. But a lot of people teach it this way. They'll go like this. I can't do it. I suck at that at that way, but and then they bring them like this and then they do the same thing. But again, it's just all preference. There's no specific way of doing it. It's just what works for you. But you do have to keep it consistent and do it the same each time. Oh, guys, I'm out of breath. I'm sorry. Usually my round pen sessions were really short at first. Even if I noticed her trying or doing it really good, that's it, we would stop, it was over, good job, and we were done. Now that she's older, again, it goes for a little bit longer, but I always focused on trying to end on a good note. Whether that good note was something silly like, I don't know, it can be anything, as long as it's a good note. I used to focus a lot on making sure she understood the exercise and she did it right and then we were done. But Rob helped me understand that any small little thing that she does right should be a good note and like you can end it there. She doesn't have to do the whole thing you just taught her perfectly to end. Even the smallest thing can be a good note. So I would focus on, at first, it was her getting the cues right one at a time. Like I wouldn't teach her trot, lope, and slow down all in one day. It would honestly be like two weeks to trot, two weeks teaching her to cue, the cue to lope, two weeks teaching her the cue to slow down. Not exactly two weeks, a week, a week and a half. It just all depended on how she was learning it. But the sessions usually lasted around 15 to 20 minutes. Now that she's older, they last about 30 minutes. The lopes have been our biggest issue. She's kind of on the lazy side. <laughs> let's see how she does. I don't, I don't know, let's do it. So I'm gonna kiss. She's not going, I'm push, putting pressure. I'm gonna kiss again. She's not going. And I start smacking. There, now I back off. Good girl. So if she starts loping, I stop everything. There, now I'm backing off. But I don't back, back off completely with her specifically because she does stop a lot. But I do make sure she realizes that I gave her a release. I'm gonna go easy, good. I feel like this is turning into a training video. <laughs> This is not a training video, guys. I'm literally, I'm just showing you guys what I did with her to teach her the cues. The way I taught them was like that. I would kiss and then start applying pressure. And then eventually she knew what each cue means, even though right now she hasn't been working a long time, so she's not doing it too well. She has favorite spots where she likes to slow down. So I've started to try and apply the pressure only in those areas. So right now she's giving me a good lope. Right here she's slowing down. I'm adding some pressure. And then backing off. She's slowing down and then backing off. The only time I click again while she's in the trot is if I want her to increase her speed. Try to only do that when I want her to increase the speed. So here she's trotting again, I kiss. So that's, that was way too many kisses and I like the goal is for her to take off with one kiss. Good, that's what I wanted, you saw? I had to kiss only once and she gave me a good takeoff. Easy. Good. Let me get her to change direction. You see how close? Look how close I had to get to get her to trot it off again. The goal now that she's older is to get her to move off of me from the middle. So that's something I do need to work on. I feel like I desensitized her way too much to the whip, to me, to my body language. Cause if you notice for me to get her to do anything, I have to go a lot closer than I would like to. So ideally I'd like to just stand in the middle and move her with my body. Because I've desensitized her too much, I actually need to get a lot closer to her cause she's so desensitized to me. So for example, if I ask her for a lope, look how close I need to get. That was kind of good, but I don't want to have to walk all the way up to her butt for her to move off. 
Again, this is stuff we're working on now, but it is something I really need to work on with her. Ideally, I would wanna, ha wanna stay here and just turn with her, turn with her, and have her continue to go. Right now, she's doing really well. She's still keeping her gait, so that's perfect. But there are some days where if I stay here in the middle, she's stopping all the time. Like all the time, she's coming back to a walk or stopping. But again, we're focused on what I first taught her, right? So it was just all the cues. My focus is to get her completely listening here in the round pen, listening to every cue the woe, the easy, the trot, the lope. So that makes it so much easier when it comes time to actually ride her. She'll have a great foundation and she'll understand exactly what each cue means and how to do it. A lot of people jump into just throwing the saddle on and riding. They don't really care too much about groundwork. I'm really, really, really passionate about groundwork. I feel like if you put a good foundation on a horse, it's it's so much better and it passes on to every everything else that you do with them. So yeah, right now, it's been two months since she's been worked, so everything does look very sloppy and crazy but in her prime when she was being worked all the time she was doing really good she was going off of the cues but again every little thing that I mentioned was something that we still needed to work on when she first started obviously she wasn't loping off with the first kiss she was just learning it that wasn't really on my mind as long as she did understand what it meant now I'm gonna ask her for a slowdown easy good oh now that she's older, I'm starting to teach her to like back up loose like that in the round pen. But again, that's not something I focused on when I first started her. But let's just see if she remembers it. Whoa. Good girl. Good girl. Whoa. Good girl. Good job. Easy. Whoa. Good girl, whoa. Do you guys see that whoa? <laughs> Good job! Uh, that was a really, really good woe. Like, that's how I would like her woe to be all the time. That was great. She gave me a backup there, too. One thing I want to say really quick, when you guys see me smack the whip, I'm not hitting her, just to make that clear. I'm literally just smacking the floor like this to encourage her to go. I am not whipping her, just for the record. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good whoa, that was a good backup. I'm gonna ask her to come in, which I already anticipate isn't gonna be too good because I have taught her to stop over there and stay over there until I ask her to come in, so we have been working on the coming in part, but let's see. All right, come on. <whistles> come on, no grass, no grass, good girl. That was tempting, huh? Walking over that big patch of grass, that was tempting. Good girl. Good job, baby. All right, you guys. It's been two months since she's been round penned. She did really good for being off for so long. So those are kind of the main things I focused on. Just a little recap. I focused on teaching her the cues by first saying the cue vocally. Then I added body pressure and then I added the whip to encourage her to go. Once she went off into that gate that I asked for, I back off completely to release the pressure. body pressure, the whip pressure, and the vocal pressure. Like There's still so many things we need to work on as you guys can see things I need to correct within myself and I feel like so far we've done pretty good I don't know <laughs> she's such a smart filly she's such a good girl you do a good job baby all right you guys that is it hopefully you enjoyed the video Brandy did a pretty good job for being off for two months she did good, she did good. <laughs> Again, I do not consider myself a horse trainer. This is just me bringing you guys along on what I do with my little filly. Leave me a comment down below letting me know if you have like any unique cues that you taught your horse. I think it'd be really interesting to find out what other people use as their cues. I know a lot of them are similar, like the basic clicking or kissing, but if you have a unique one, I'd, I'd love to know what it is. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.